Each week, nearly a dozen movies are released theatrically. 40 films a month, more than 400 a year. That's a plethora of cinema. Too much cinema. You'd have to be an addict to see all that. But don't fret. We've got you covered. This is Cinematics. Hey everyone, what's up? It's a new week of Cinematics. This is Cinematics episode 248. We have a whole bunch of really interesting movies. I'm looking at the title right now. Last Summer, Chronicles of a Wandering Saint, Majority Rules, and Thelma. Also want to mention Green Border, which did not make the podcast title last week. It might not make the podcast title this week, but Bruce Perky, all by his lonesome, will probably reiterate what he thought of Green Border. The reason why is he's not going to do a, a re, sort of a recap of his review in, in depth, but he's going to recommend Green Border this weekend for the week of June 28th. It comes out on a wider release. Eric Holmes, how's the last week been? What, if you can remember, what have you what have you been up to? What have you been up to last week? Who's Eric? I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> all confusing to me. Uh, it, it's been pretty good. Just running karaoke, doing some interviews. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a couple bangers this week. I'm good. Kind of curious of what uh, Bruce thinks of one of these, and I really wish you saw the one. Oh, you wish I saw Chronicles of a Wandering Saint. Spoiler alert, it's a banger. (laughs) It's a banger. (laughs) Let's see if Bruce agrees, concurs. Bruce, last week, recap for our listeners, Cinematics listeners, what you've been up to. Oh, boy. Um, Boy, home life is pretty boring. But uh, my my youngest kid, he's learning how to drive. So that's probably the most thrilling thing I do is (laughs) go out with him in a giant 2000 pound vehicle in the roadway but no he's doing pretty good with that my kid in college doing summer school and uh it's just hot 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 down here like most of the nation right now we're just baking about and i'm sure colorado is probably similar but uh we're like 97 today with so much humidity that we're having thunderstorms tonight so yeah that's what we got not good whatsoever when you have humidity is it Look, in Colorado, Eric, is it the humid, as is the heat sticky, or is it dry? It's I'm not a- as bad as it is in the Midwest, but it's bad for Colorado, for sure. And yeah, when I first moved out here, like, you know, if it's too hot, you just go in the shade, and then all of a sudden, you, you put on a, a, a hoodie, and then you go back out in the sun, and you got to take the hoodie off, but it's like the regular Midwest kind of heat out here now where it's just hot everywhere, including here. Like I had a, you know, we just did the Patreon episode. I had to turn my computer off for a bit because uh, it got too hot to touch the computer. I'm like, I gotta turn this off and cool it down. So. <laughs> Is the computer a little bit less hot now, Eric? Did Was it five yeah, minutes I, okay? I, I should be having the fan on, but if I do, then you'll hear this the whole time. And we don't oh, need that. Oh, so. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll get we'll get by. We'll get by. We we will get by on these really interesting movies. Again, Eric was mentioning in the Patreon recap. We just finished reviewing I Saw the Devil and Kill List. Thank you for our Patreon members for being part of our community and helping support us here on Cinematics. Listeners, for five dollar catch all every month, you can get a Patreon bonus episode that all three of us do really cool picks. We spotlight two films from a given year. This recap, this latest Patreon episode for June was the year 2011. And then Bruce Perky will be doing, and me and Eric, this is 2006 for July. So Patreon members, please tell us movies that you love, you want us to review for the year 2006. Bruce Perky is the most diligent out of all three or organized out of us three. He's going to put up a poll shortly in july regarding what films we should watch in 2006 for the bonus episode finally patreon members you also get our cinematics weekly review episode a day early right now it's wednesday 5 27 we're going to be here for maybe another 10 minutes it's going to be a very quick show after the you guys you guys basically patreon members get the show about a day earlier than most listeners they get it on wednesday most listeners get it on Thursday. So that's it. That's a plug on cinematics. Eric, did you want to plug something else regarding Shadow Curtains? I, yeah, what, what, yes, Eric. I did. Yes, actually. 
Ooh, actually, man, <laughs> did we forget a uh, shower curtain talk in the Patreon episode? I think we, we did. Actually. We did. We did. That's okay. Um, but there's no new shower curtains. I was going to do banger season underwear, but all they did not have uh, underwear on Teespring. But they did have biker shorts. So there's women's uh, banger season biker shorts that you can buy on cinematicspodcast.com. Yeah, you, know, you have to be a woman to wear them. If you okay. fit into them, they're yours for the it's low price month. of forty dollars and sixty nine cents. I think Bruce Bergman is mentioning it's Pride Month. Yes, and there's so so many different yeah. things: biker shorts, horse-drawn yeah. carriages. Pack yourself carriages. into those shorts, and, and that was a missed opportunity. <laughs> yes, yeah, cinematicspodcast.com for all our merch. However, you support us, it is all. Even if you just listen to the show, that's the most important thing. Thank you guys so much for your support since the year 2015. Now let's get to our features. Eric was saying this is the first time, I think, or maybe the second time in our four or five years doing this together, that he wishes I saw a movie. This movie is called Chronicles of a Wandering Saint. Eric likes to spoil things. He already said it's a banger. So (laughs) who knows? Maybe Bruce will actually submarine this entire review and say, actually, Eric, Chronicles of a Wandering Saint sucks so much it bleeps okay who wants to do the plot summary of chronicles of a wandering saint let me go eeny meeny miny bruce perky what is this movie about real real quick bruce right. before you go oh, oh, oh. um we'll not yes, talk about the, we will not talk about the twist oh, oh no 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 <laughs> Are you, we'll talk and, and it's not it's not a twist you it's it, you will never see this coming. It was. Are, awesome. are you joking? Are you joking? No, I'm not joking. It was awesome, but Is do it, not give it away. Does it have to do with a coffee table? No, no, <laughs> no. <coffee laughs> they, 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 you, you could you could guess a million times. You will never guess what happens halfway through this movie. Does and I'm not wand- even talking about a plot point. Is the Wandering Saint in a folk horror film? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, you gave it away. <laughs> okay, Bruce, take it away. Very good, Eric. No, I am in. Uh, I, I definitely want to see this movie. Uh, directed by uh, Tomas Gomez Bustillo. Uh, the main story of this is about Rita. And Rita is by played by Monica Avia. Um, she is a really mild mannered, uh, middle aged, maybe a little older than middle aged. would say she's about 50s, maybe. And she just works in this. I don't even know if she officially works there, but you see her like cleaning and taking care of this chapel, the small little chapel. And uh, boy, I don't know how much to say about this movie. She is as about as unassuming a character as you could possibly imagine. You see all of the, uh, some of the other parishioners come in and they're all singing their songs and they're making their plans and they're all gossiping and doing their thing. And she's just in the corner and she's cleaning and she's going in the back room. And at one point she, should I say what she finds? Should I sing that she finds? Yeah, I I think like even the halfway point, there's just the one thing. Oh don't yeah, talk I'll, about but like no. like plot wise. In after that, I I think it's fair game. Let's just say she's the kind of character that is so unassuming that people probably hardly even notice her. Like she just goes through life and people don't pay attention to her. She like kind of like me, kind of like like me, Bruce. Who? What's that? <laughs> okay. And it's like she has good intentions. She seems like she's devout. Um, you see her go at home with her husband and her husband's very mild mannered too. In fact, there's an interesting thing where he's trying to kind of reconnect with her and he's talk. he's, he's bought these, uh, like rain parkas and he wants to take her back to this waterfall where they, they were at, where they were very young. I think where he proposed to her or something, I forget what happened there, but it was like a, a early romantic moment. And he's kind of making a, a later life romantic gesture and she's just kind of like, doesn't have time for that. And she finds in the back of the church this um, covered up statue of a saint or a nun or something. And, and she does some research and she thinks that it might be, it might be this long lost statue that from this uh, parish. And um, let's just say she makes an uh, endeavors to make that statue return to the church. And this is going to be a big, big thing for her. And I would say the whole first half of the movie is about that. Very quiet, very, I would say, kind of charming, but also kind of just um, kind of like indie, 
like not quite indie porn. I mean, there's definitely a story going on there, but it's, it's not got that like, quirkiness to it, but yeah, like but not it, annoyingly so. Yeah, it doesn't hammer you over the head with it. It's more just like letting like everyday weird facts of life kind of make quirkiness real. And I'll just say it makes a turn. And boy, oh boy, does it make a turn. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think I liked it quite as much as Eric, but I did quite like it. And I would say if the, the, yeah, the second half of the movie is awesome. Okay. The second awesome. half of the movie. Okay. All right. Currently it's sitting of this recording Chronicles of Wandering Saint, 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Eric, your Seems review. low. Seems, Seems low. low. Okay. <laughs> this is All a right, hard movie it. not to like at least, at least like it. So yeah. the, so the first half of the movie that we can talk about, um, yeah, the, the love the Rita character and it is like really kind of slow and like it writes that line of any point but I think where it doesn't lose me is that I like the character Rita I want to I want to know more about her I want to you know see her live her life and do well yeah kind of really exactly boring, right? and so it's yeah. like I think on paper it looks like be boring but I'm interested in the character so I'll, I'm following along and then that the halfway mark hits and then it just becomes a completely different movie. Uh, still same kind of uh, cuteness and uh, quirkiness, but it just like it just the movie just opens up at that point, and it just becomes so much better. And we really need to do spoiler talk. On this. It's almost impossible not to. Oh, it, the only thing I'll say about the second half is there's some stuff with a dog that I adored <laughs> some stuff with and dog. Uh, i will say this has the best post-credit sequence i've seen in any movie ever my gosh Hands eric down. yeah you are not wrong wait you're not wrong you, you you being such a diehard mcu fan how can you say that i'm being it's you gotta, you gotta watch the movie <laughs> I, mean, I, I, it, I i defy puts, anyone to disagree with me on that you defy it oh, puts eric. every post-credit Every post-credit sequence in history is put to shame by this movie. Okay, are you guys trolling right now? Is that were you trolling right? Are you, no, are we you, are not no. trolling you. Uh, no. Nope. My goodness. Okay, so Eric, without giving, you're very good about not spoiling this at all. <laughs> when you saw Middle of the Way, when it made that turn, what was your initial reaction when you saw the direction that it went? The decision it, it was kind of uh, a little bit of a shock but it also like made sense i'm like okay this is where we're at now now like all the all the parts that were kind of slow going kind of built up to the second half oh okay. god we gotta do spoiler talk on this okay we gotta do spoiler talk <laughs> all right so bad bruce perky before before we get to ratings people who like blank will really enjoy chronicles of a wandering saint i sound like gene rayburn from the match game i apologize <laughs> if you like there's a movie if you not like content <laughs> movies, this is like in that yes. same wheelhouse okay okay not quite as goofy yeah. not quite as goofy or quite as surrealistic but uh, unique and odd i guess in, in that, if you like that kind of in in genuinely creative i guess i would say you know genuinely creative okay very good bruce perky final thoughts and ratings of chronicles of a wandering saint uh, once again we have so many of these movies and we didn't mention it again but green border was one of them uh we have so many of these movies that i'd feel like you're just going to get lost in the mix and it'll it'll appear on someplace like hulu and it'll be way down in the you know, whatever algorithm is making you see a movie pop up and people will just probably ignore this or they'll advertise it in some way that really spoils that second half. Now, you can't spoil it, but it's such an awesome turn that it's great to experience it. I just feel like it's going to get lost. I, I hope it's not heartbreaking. Can I don't know if either of you saw the trailer to Chronicles of a Wandering Saint, but I'm sure it would be very heartbreaking if they showed that twist or whatever do you think do you think there's a chance that people can get their oh, stuff there's a big chance I, but there's a big chance yeah no. I, I i don't think i saw the trailer either okay. way um well great you haven't seen it was the trailer say because i, I haven't I'm, I'm gonna watch the movie first and then i'm gonna go see the yeah. trailer okay and try to it's only just, like 90 minutes right you know what it, 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 84 minutes 84 minutes so, Four, yeah so. I, I talked this book to death but project tale mary it has um a similar not a similar twist but like a similar thing like halfway through the book a thing happens that car that carries through the rest of the the story 
and that's not a big it's not a big uh spoiler because it's what the yeah. book is but at the same time to get to that point and then see that reveal it's so good that you hate to have that be ruined so it's right. probably best just not to yeah if you haven't seen i don't know what's in the trailer for chronicles of a wandering saint i would suggest not watching it because i could probably see him kind of giving away what the second half is but it, i think it'd be much better if you just watch the movie cold and just let it let it happen okay agree 100 percent, 100 percent. i'm sorry you're rating again Bruce, on um, um, you know, I was gonna say four, but the more I talk about it, the more I think about it, I'm, mm, I'm gonna go four and a half. I, I think this movie sits with me, and I think that it's, I think it's so, it's, it's great. Four and a half. Oh, oh my. <laughs> As the seconds go, Bruce Berkey is falling in love more and more with this movie. It's, it's weird. He started off with maybe a three and a half version on a four. That I. I this is a weird movie. So I, I definitely have to see this Chronicles of a Wandering Saint. Eric Holmes, your I I'm guessing your rate your rating will be a six point nine star banger or something. I don't know. That's my I, you know what? I think if uh you know talking about this makes Bruce's rating go up, I think if we talk spoilers, he'll come up to my level on a six point nine and then we can <laughs> six point nine each other. <laughs> very good family show. Very, but, uh, very good. Yeah, this is uh this is like on paper, this should not work. Like mm. I I don't believe I love this movie as much as I do, but it's just uh, like Bruce said, it's so creative. It's got that it's got that quirkiness, but that content debut kind of quirkiness, not the like lame, annoying kind of quirkiness. It's just uh, endears you to the characters, and then what they do in that second half is just so damn good. This movie's awesome. And oh. the magic is really, and we talked about it before. The magic is that you like the character so much and that a lot of times these quirky movies don't have characters that you really like attach to they're just the quirkiness of the situation this has the quirkiness of the situation but then a character you're really behind and i think that's kind of the magic okay so that is chronicles of a wandering saint that is yes. four and a half and, stars from bruce perky and, and six point yes we we mentioned it i'll mention it again stay after the credits wow stay after the credits that is very very good okay so I I I think I missed a really good movie this week. Good. Here's the good news. I I was able to see a good movie this week. That film is called Last Summer. It's a movie by Catherine Berlat. I believe she's a French filmmaker, and it centers on yeah. She's a French auteur. She's 75 years old. Bruce, I don't know if you've ever seen Fat Girl. That movie came out 20 plus years ago. I think you would love that movie. Very interesting artist and. This movie is essentially a family drama. Catherine Berlat is also a co-writer in collaboration with Pascal Bonitzer. The movie centers on a a lawyer, and that lawyer is played by Leah, Leah Drucker, and she's a very successful woman. She has a really loving husband who's a businessman, and she has two wonderful adopted Asian daughters or kids, and they live somewhere in this remote area of France, like French countryside area, very nice, idyllic location. The problem is her suburban life is upended by the arrival of her stepson. Her stepson, he's 17 and he's just a whole lot of trouble. And here's the thing. He is more than a whole lot of trouble. Is This is not a spoiler. This is a premise of the, this is a summary. She ends up hooking up with this, her 17-year-old stepson, Theo. Theo is played by Samuel Kircher. And what happens for the rest of the narrative is you get to see a little bit of their relationship and what happens when it's a wrong situation, right? She's she's an attorney, actually. What's interesting, she's an attorney for people who are abused. And here she is abusing a 17-year-old and seducing a 17-year-old, Okay. So that is the premise of last summer. What happens to this relationship? Will they stay together? If they don't stay together, will the secret of their illicit and illegal affair come out to the husband and to the loved ones, et cetera, et cetera? There's a lot of speaking and talking in last summer. It's one of these sophisticated adult dramas, but under the hands of Catherine Berlat, it is a lot. It's an elevated family drama. Music is by Kim Gordon, former member of Sonic Youth. 
And it says here, music by King Kim Gordon heightens the erotic tension of last summer, a film that boldly surveys power dynamics, female desire, and fulfillment. So again, it's not kind of it's really kind of not cool to see a 17-year-old and a woman in her early to mid 50s hooking up. It's not too graphic to sex, but it is intimate. So this is one of these movies that some people might not be able to stomach. The movie is based on it's a remake of the 2019 Danish film Queen of Hearts. But I love this movie. First of all, it's a great look at power dynamics and sort of that intricate plot of what happens when a, this relationship goes sour. And it's Fat Girl from Catherine Berlat from 20 some odd years ago really went there with its graphic nature and its execution. And that same aesthetic applies to all of the events that transpire in last summer. You think it's going to go someplace regarding her relationship with a teenager, but it goes just different kind of beats. And it's a very unexpected an unpredictable family drama. Unpredictable and unexpected is something you do not see too much in the family drama genre. And I'm so glad to see that it is prevalent in last summer. It's only playing though, Friday, June 28th at the New Art, the Los Angeles New Art Theater. If you are listening, Cinematics Facebook group member, Matt Stillman, if you have time, go check out last summer. Or if you are in Los Angeles, Give this movie a shot. And I'm sure as the weeks wind down in summer, there will be more locations to check it out. But until then, June 28th at the Los Angeles North Theater, my rating for last summer, four and a half stars. I also want to apologize to Bruce and Eric after all their praises for Chronicles of a Wandering Saint. It opens in New York, June 28th at IFC Center, as well as Los Angeles, July 5th at Lumiere Cinema. Again, that's echoing. Un, that, yeah. That's unfortunate. That is that sounds, very, that, that, that sounds like it's going to play in three theaters and then be forgotten. I, well, well, if you're listening to this, when chronic, when you can see Chronicles of Wandering Saint, go watch it. Okay. And it's Bruce Perky and Eric's, Eric Holmes' job to make sure that Chronicles of a Wandering Saint gets seen by way more people than the people who see it in these two movie theaters. That's their, that's our job at Cinematics. As the leaders of cinematics, finding undiscovered or gems that are in the dirt, people can't find it. And one of them is Chronicles of a Wandering Saint. The other is Last Summer. Did I like it because of the prurient interest of an, of a woman, a middle-aged woman and a 17-year-old? I'm not going to say. I'm just saying it's an elevated, classy family drama. Well done. It's just a real, really well done film by Catherine Blatt. Again, what did I give it, Eric Holmes? Did I give it? I'm not going to give four it six and a point. Half. Yes, four. four Yes, four and a half. Very good, Eric Holmes. Okay, now let's get to an echo. That echo being Bruce Perky. Just echo your sentiments from last week regarding Green Border, reason why you did a great job at reviewing the film last week. But this week, for the week of June 28th, it goes to a wider audience. What can people get from this latest film from Agnieszka Holland? I mean, basically, if you... I mean, it's a heavy movie, but if you like a movie that really... um you have entertained been entertained or impacted by some of these movies that are really epic around the issue of immigration or immigrants immigrants rights anything like that then we talked about um Theo Capitano earlier this year this is a great kind of a companion piece to that because it's kind of the other end of the coin whereas that was the the journey this is kind of like the it's supposed to be the journey but it's kind of the end point of the journey and that we follow uh, Syrian immigrants as they go from Belarus into Poland and how there's this ongoing, not really a battle per se, this ongoing conflict between the two nations where we are constantly sending, pushing the immigrants back and forth across those borders. And this movie does the great thing of, of kind of being a little more epic as opposed to just focusing on the the immigrants. It focuses on the immigrants, the guards, the border guards, the people who are trying to, uh, the uh, activists, all these different sides. So it's it's a really well-rounded, uh, really challenging, and uh, sometimes harrowing movie, um, beautifully shot in black and white. So there's more barriers for some people, <laughs> foreign movie in black and white. But uh, it's it's fantastic, and it will hopefully find an audience, just like we talked about with Wandering Saint movie. 
So right. So- Right. Bruce and Green Border, I'm looking at the press release. It says it, it, quote, opens our eyes and speaks to the heart, challenging viewers to reflect on the moral choices that fall to ordinary people every day. So that's one thing. But my question to you is, yes, yes, this movie, it's Polish, Arabic, English, French. These are the languages in this movie, I'm assuming. It's 152 mm-hmm. minutes for the layperson going to the theater. Are those 150 were those 152 minutes prohibitive for you or maybe prohibitive for some what kept you going over that two hour they or 90 minute mark they weren't for me and part of that is because you're telling the story from so many angles that as opposed to just being with the one point of view for that length of time which still could have worked you'll 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 go for what 30 minutes with one point of view get really invested And then you'll flip it and all of a sudden now you'll be with guards for another 20 minutes and then maybe you'll be with activists for another 30 minutes. And each of those stories involves you and then they kind of interweave. And by then you're invested in all three and there's not that much of the movie left to go because now you, you're in all of those stories. Um, also, it's so boldly political in the sense that it takes a point of view which you don't often some of these movies want to be very like sterile and and like a bird's eye and just give you the the horrors of war whatever it is right they want to kind of stand back and be a distant observer this is an involved observer this 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 movie takes a point of view so it will create a lot of i think dialogue and debate because you either be agree with that point of view and be you know enraged or activated or in whatever <laughs> mobilized by it or you'll be angry about it and that'll also create dialogue so i think i i think it's 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 quite um audacious in that sense too which i appreciate that as well bruce not being, that's not afraid to take a stance okay bruce perky last week you gave it four and a half stars that rating does still stand a week later Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Four and a half stars for Bruce Perky for Green Border. Thank you for that recap from your review of last week. Bruce Perky and Greg Trzavosti will now stop their video. We are going to take a nap. We are elderly men. We need our rest and respite. A little bit of sucker. S-U-C-C-O-R. Sucker is a synonym for relief. I don't know if you knew that, Bruce. Ah. I see. I did. Eric. I, but now I, I just remember. I just remembered studying for the SATs. All these words I haven't used that since I was seventeen or eighteen. Sucker, sucker. You were Anyways. a success. Uh, success. Yes. Very sucker. good. The reason why sucker. Bruce and I will be shutting up for the for the majority of the next ten minutes is because majority rules and Thelma is on the docket. Bruce Perk, if you want, you can take a siesta. You can leave the room if you want. I mean, you, okay, <laughs> Eric. Eric, you are a man without a country. A man without any co-hosts. I'm just gonna throw a couple of lobs, and you're gonna go for it. Majority right. rules. It's in theaters starting June 28th. It's written and directed by AJ Schneck. Wait, Schnack. 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 Okay, Schnack. Like thank rock. you. Okay, okay, Schnack. Like rock. Now, it premieres on New York Friday. I'm looking at the poster for Majority Rules. Here's the tagline: What if changing the way we vote could change everything? This is a documentary, Majority Rules. What can you tell our listeners? Is it worth checking out? Uh, yes. In short, yes, it is. Um, this is probably one of those documentaries that, it, well, first of all, the, the, uh, it, follows a, uh, it follows an election in Alaska where they uh, tried uh, ranked choice voting. <clears throat> and um, I, I like Sarah Palin, uh, Lisa Murkowski, Mary Tola and uh, I, I can't remember all the names, but either way, they're having a they're having an election up in uh, up in Alaska, and they decide they're going to do the ranked choice voting, just the kind of more of an experiment than anything. And uh, when Sarah Palin gets into the race, it's kind of like, oh, Sarah Palin's going to win. It's it's between Sarah Palin and this one, uh, the other person I, I think it was like two different republicans or something like that it's it, it weird up there anyway sarah palin's the the favorite to win this and they so how the ranked choice voting works is that everyone votes for whoever and then they take the top five and then they have a separate election with those top five now you do a ranked choice so here's the five people that are on the ballot and you pick one, two, three, four, you know, you rank them. 
and then so they'll get all the votes whoever has the most votes the the whoever has the least amount of votes they're out of the race now and they take those votes they remove them from the top and go with the second one and then divvy those up and now you know and then the the last person on there is removed they take the votes and go on so on and so forth until they figure out what the majority rules hence the title kind of similar to uh root so deep where it's like here's an idea and now we're going to watch this play out and see how it actually works that's kind of kind of what this is and uh yeah it's just good stuff it's i think it's definitely better than the uh uh, system most of us have now especially with the presidential election hey which which rapist you want to vote for this one or that one well i guess that rapist is less of a rapist than that one i guess i'll go with the less of it this one kind of sort of levels the playing field like the the bad people can still get in but i think like the bad per you have to the the people running for office they have to do more than say uh I may be terrible, but I'm less terrible than that guy because you have more people to contend with. And it, I think it just makes uh, the dynamic a lot, maybe a lot easier for someone that's not a complete creep to uh, win. An but also, this is one of those documentaries that's as good as it is. I don't think it'll you know, it, it's just another drop in the bucket. Hopefully, it'll eventually get us to where we need to be. I don't think this is going to be the one to turn everyone around, though I wish it would. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are just going to kind of cross their arms and sneer at this. But regardless, that, it, it, it's a great documentary, and you should watch it. So, and it explains the ranked choice of voting a lot better than I just did, because I think I just bone that pretty well hard. no well no it's it's not your job to do that it's a documentary's job like you're saying yeah. eric and it's, it's, so give yourself a break there but it, it says at the press release it says quote how did the american electoral system become so dysfunctional and can changes to how we vote change our entire system for the better you answered that eric but i think for the 92 minutes do you think it's a value added experience for people to watch this documentary uh, yeah, again, it's it's definitely interesting. Uh, I wanted to punch the screen every time Sarah Palin opened her mouth, but you know that's <laughs> that's a uh, love is a battlefield. Love she, is a battlefield, she, Eric. She's, right? She's an idiot. Oh, okay. uh, and, and, but you know, all right, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I I think it is. But you know, like Sarah Palin said it herself during the during in the. Uh, in the okay. documentary, it's okay. like I don't know about this ranked choice voting thing. Like, how am I supposed to win with this? It's like, like you're not because <laughs> you're not the party. You're not the. You're not what people want. You're okay. what the people in power want, and that put you in a position. And this is just a better way to do. Big uh, building a better rat trap or wheel. Something I don't know. Okay, I, it, it's good stuff. But the people that need to see it probably won't. But hopefully, this will. Yeah. This will be one step closer to getting towards rank rank choice voting, which, by the way, I uh, they had a couple arguments in here against it. And I even asked in the interview, I asked uh, AJ Schnock about it. And uh, I was like, what's the what's the argument against it? And he's like, basically, we can't win. So we don't like it. And, you mm -hmm. know, we can't cheat the system. So we don't like it. And of course, the. Uh, Republicans and Democrats don't like it because uh, an independent can get in there. Mm -hmm. Majority rules. What is your rating, Eric? In theaters, June twenty eighth. This is five stars. Um, this is, uh, yeah, a, okay. a, a important documentary that people will ignore. Unfortunately. Oh come on! I'm not going to ignore it. I, I'm not. I think there's Bruce. Is, Bruce and I got to watch it right after. We're going to make the world a better yeah, place, but, Eric. But, I mean, you, you, you guys aren't. You guys are horrible people. You are, you aren't the horrible people I did, that need to be convinced of this. Oh, don't don't give Bruce credit. Um, yes, yeah, so majority, <laughs> majority rules in theater June twenty eighth. Great review from Eric Holmes. I'm sorry, Bruce. I had to throw you under the bus. That's how I do. But you know who doesn't do? You know who doesn't throw people under the bus? There's this person, not a real person. It's a fictional person called Thelma. Eric Holmes was asking me, or asking me and Bruce this week. Hey. Can I do a review of Thelma? Just a longer review. And I'm thinking, I don't know. Me and Bruce, we're, we're elderly. We don't like to talk about ourselves. We hang out with June Squibb all the time. 
I don't know, Bruce. Bruce and I did, did we see Thelma? I think I think Thelma's story yesterday. Uh, we were over at the the old folks' home. We were hanging out. <laughs> we were, we were, we had a good time. But uh, Eric, you you did not have the pleasure of being at the our old age home, elderly home with June Squibb. You saw the movie. What do you want to tell listeners about Thelma, which is now in theaters and it's getting good reviews. People are buying tickets. People are watching this movie. What are people getting from Thelma? Your review, Eric Holmes. Um, I think, well, based on the trailer I saw, it it looked like a John Wick, but with June Squibb as the John Wick character. And it's really not that at all. So June Squibb, uh, Thelma, um, she gets uh, she gets a scam caller and the scammer takes a bunch of money. For, you know, she sends money to a, a scammer. And then her uh, her grandson, Daniel, played by Fred Heikinger. Okay. Um, the, the, their relationship with each other in this is absolutely adorable. We'll love every second of it. But anyway, he's like, Grandma, you can't do that. They're, they're just scamming you. And, and so she decides that she's going to go find the scammer and get her money back. And uh, she goes to an old folks' home, uh, meets up with... Uh, who is the actor Richard Roundtree? She yes. meets up with Ben, and uh, they decide that they're going to sneak out of the old folk home and go find the scammer. And uh, her grandson Daniel is waiting out in the car because he thinks that she's just going to go and say hi to her friend and then come back out. And then when she doesn't come back, he's like, "Hey, uh, where's my grandma?" And the people at the old folks home are like, "You're going to have to narrow that down a bit." Anyway, they're looking for Thelma. Meanwhile, Thelma and Ben are looking for the scammer and uh, see Daniel's uh, uh, parents played by Clark Gregg and Parker Posey. You know, they're like the Thelma, uh, you know, they're all looking for her. And it's just kind of uh, kind of old people, you know, cutely going throughout town trying to, it, it, it sort of becomes a road trip movie almost because they're trying to, trying to find the person or like a detective movie. But uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Kind Let me key, guess. Kind of funny. Spoiler alert. Also starring Malcolm McDowell. Let me guess. He's the bad guy in this one. I'm guessing. I'm just kind of guessing because he's probably. I didn't say it. You didn't, didn't see it. So saying. I don't think that's a spoiler. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying. But I think I think that's a tell. When you have Malcolm McDowell in a film, that's a tell. That is not. He's freaking Caligula, right? So yeah. that is not a tell. Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. Okay. And in fact, in fact, like, I, I mean. Uh, if that is a spoiler, I will say that you didn't even give away half of what is so charming and great about that about that scene. Okay, written and directed by Josh Margolin, running at ninety seven minutes, rated PG thirteen. It's charming. What were the things that you love? What made this movie a unique experience for you? Why should people go? Actually, some let's just say Devil's Advocate, Eric Holmes. I have a couple bucks. Why should I see it in the theater where I can just sit in my you-know-what and just wait for it till it hits Prime Video or Netflix several or maybe several weeks down the road? Uh, Thelma and Daniel's relationship is going to rip your heart out in a good way. Like, not like, oh, it's so sad, but it's like, oh, and they're so cute together. I love them. And then when, uh, with, uh, when Ben comes into the picture and becomes Thelma and Ben, same thing. I mean, I'm, June Squibb just in general is charming as hell. Um, and you know, her with, uh, Fred, uh, hiking her and her with Richard Roundtree. It's just, I, I, it, you know, sometimes, you, uh, what, what was that? Uh, um, Miss Harris goes to Paris. Love that. Yeah. I don't like that. You watch a oh. movie. It's like, this is, I, I feel good watching this. You, you know, it's not it, it, like the jokes aren't like, ha ha. You know, it's not like side splitting or anything, but it's like, funny enough and charming enough that you just feel good watching it. It doesn't make you shed a tear though. It's more of like a, a laughing kind of thing. It doesn't make there's you a, so there's um there's a couple parts where I got a bit dusty, mm. but it wasn't like you know like when like a, a character interaction happens and it's so like just so ungodly sweet. Yeah. That you just you're just like oh it's so <laughs> Yeah, like, like 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 watching a newborn baby, there or like that, or like a baby does something cute. It's like so cute that it's like you just want to cry or like squeeze them or do something. Yeah, 
Not did squeeze them to death, like you, you know, I'm talking like baby squeeze. Like, did, you know. did Thelma remind you of, of Bruce Perkins? <laughs> like, I don't understand this. I don't. I don't get this. <laughs> yeah. Did, did Thelma remind you of uh, me and Bruce as how we're in several years we're going to shed this mortal coil ourselves, and you might be crying in the distance and looking for two new podcast co-hosts? Eric Holmes, what do you think? Oh, um, I, I, I mean, if you guys are yeah, if you guys were as cute as Thelma and Ben are. I, I couldn't do this. I, I just couldn't handle it. <laughs> if you're like, this is too cute. I'm out. Okay, <laughs> fine. I can't take it. Okay, so what is your rating on Thelma currently in theaters, Eric Holmes? This one's probably a four and a half. And it, this would be like a great movie to watch after you watch like a, what's like a recent bummer that we saw. Like a really... Mm. Like... So, like it, like a, The coffee uh, table. The coffee table. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you watch the coffee table and you're like, oh, God, life sucks. Put in Thelma, it's like, you know what? Life's pretty good. I, okay. I like life. Okay. I like, I, I won't. That, that, this, that, Thelma's like a perfect palate cleanser for that sort of thing. Okay. And it's, and Bruce Perky, he and I are, we're not palate cleansers. We are ex- existential negative human beings. So who knows? Maybe Bruce and I would down the road, maybe we might like Thelma as well. But for, uh, right now, four and a half stars from Eric Holmes, 97 minutes, PG 13. Go see it in theaters. Also, with a high rating for our recommends, is a movie that Bruce Perky is he is in the heavens singing and saying, "Hey, you should watch The Watchers." Bruce Perky, what is it about this movie that makes it so wonderful and beautiful and special and life affirming? What is your review of The Watchers? <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> okay, so. um, The Watchers. Well. But first of all, I went to see The Watchers because my kid wanted to go see it really bad. And I was like, okay, I'll go see The Watchers with you. Sure. And this is uh, the directorial debut by uh, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. Oh, yes. Ishana Shyamalan. Yes. And it stars uh, Dakota Fanning and a bunch of people. I guess uh, Georgina Campbell. Campbell. That's yeah. She's. Yeah, she's been in a bunch of things. Barbarian, I believe, is one of the most famous things recently. So... Uh, high concept, like a lot of her father's things. Uh, you know, he, uh, the basic, you know, he'll always have like a, whatever, some crazy concept. Uh, people on the beach and they always turn old really fast. Well, hers is uh, the character of Mina, played by Dakota, is taking a parrot. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> taking a parrot, uh, this rare parrot, out to somebody and in the Irish countryside and she gets lost in these woods that are mysterious and people have probably seen the ads. The ads are all over the place with this one. She ends up meeting these three people. They're in this small room that has like a two-sided mirror for a whole wall. And when she gets in there, they immediately tell her exposition style. Hey, when you're in here, got it. You can't turn your back to the, turn your back to the glass. You get the, the watches are out there. They want to watch you. And you have to do all these, you have to follow all these rules and you can't leave. And you can't, if you go out at night, then you're done for. And that's kind of the basic setup. And then the the mystery is who are the watchers and what is happening and all this kind of stuff. So can I say something, Bruce, first? Yeah. It, it has an interesting premise. Yes, that is the plus for sure. I was going to say on the positive side, really interesting premise, good cast, great production values. It looks really good. Um, I would say from this experience that with a better script, which is the negative, I think Ashana might do some really interesting work. I, I don't didn't go back to look who wrote the script, but this feel like something based on a book that just doesn't translate. Like it's very exposition heavy. It's a lot of telling us the rules and then telling us new rules. And it's, it's very convoluted. And even the result of what happens and kind of where it leads is kind of interesting. The script itself is just in such a preposterous, weird, unwieldy thing that you can almost feel the actors trying to act act the script to make it better, but it's hard to do because of the words they're given. Um, it's based it's on a novel down, by A. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, Bruce. It's based on a novel by mm, A.M. No. Shine. So I think you're guess is correct that it's based on a novel so hence the exposition laden narrative but yeah it I feels don't... like a really interesting world that wasn't told in an interesting way and that's the sad part of it like there's there's something there and it just 
doesn't quite work. It's kind of awkward. Uh, overall, I mean, I'd probably go two and a half. Like it's right on the border. It's it wants to tip either way. I don't. I didn't hate my time watching it. I enjoyed it while I was there, sort of. But it also just didn't tilt me to the positive side. You know what I mean? So because of what happens without giving without giving anything away in the third, in the final act, it's not even worth getting to that point, right? With the mist, it's not worth unearthing that mystery because you're just like two and a half in it yeah yeah unfortunately Oof. yes because some of the stuff just doesn't work <laughs> and but some people might buy into it a little bit better and like it but uh, i wanted you know anderson says this all the time it would have been great if it was a better movie and that's this is a, kind of the epitome of one of those movies where there's so many factors that are great and just the script and that part, part of it just let it down so hard and what did your son think of this movie? He was about the same as me. Hmm. Okay. All right. So let's see. The Watchers, there were some comments here on our Cinematics Facebook group. It says, let's see. Dave Gullick, reviewer Dave Gullick said, it's not, it's not bad, but I see why people didn't like it. Also, let's see who else. Matonio Adonis Helios said, me too. I find it hard to recommend, but it did it for me personally. So Matonio enjoyed it. Kyle McFadden said, couldn't agree more. So there were some supporters of The Watchers. Again, Matonio said, I loved it. Saw it at the cinema twice within 30 hours. Obsessed with adult Dakota Fanning and female Mark Rylance. There's an actress here who reminds him of the female version of Mark Rylance. I don't know, Eric, it seems like one of these movies... Might be sort of too slow burning for you. What do you think? You're you're never gonna watch the Watchers. I mean, I I like the I like the M Night Shyamalan, so I'm definitely interested to see if his daughter kind of picked up some similar uh, similar things. Um, yeah, I'll I'll check it out. Yeah, I think I'll check. It comes out on Blu-ray pretty soon. I did a little post on it recently, but um, yeah, all right. So that's two and a half stars from Bruce Berkey for the Watchers. And I think that is it. I, You know what? Right now, I think we have next week. Is it going to be – we're going to kick the can this week on on the box. We're going to do a box pick next week for our July 4th, July 5th show. Eric Holmes, Bruce Berkey, I think, is previously indisposed. He might be getting yeah. back. He might not. But Eric Holmes, you got final thoughts? Um, two things I forgot to mention. Okay. Uh, Juan, Chronicles of Wandering Saints. Mm -hmm. uh there is uh the song uh the dj the heaven the brian adams cover by dj sammy and yanu featuring doe okay that song is heavily featured in the movie so okay it's great thumbs up if you love that song as much as i do (laughs) Uh, too this one i'm kicking myself i didn't know this uh richard roundtree apparently died october of last year yes i forgot to mention uh so the film was his second to last movie i guess he's got another one coming out but yeah i feel like an idiot i didn't know no, I, I should have mentioned that. Yeah. So rest in peace to Richard Roundtree. I interviewed him years ago as well for, I think, I'm trying to think, remember the movie. Was it original Gangsters or something like that? But yeah, he had a great career. So, and he's very good in this movie, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Him and, him and June Squibb together. It's like okay. magic. And apparently it's never going to happen, which is unfortunate, but yeah. Okay. So next week we're, we will be back for our July 5th episode. We are going to be reviewing a movie called kill and i think eric holmes and bruce perky they have screeners for that mm-hmm. indian action film so you're gonna enjoy it eric i um, look eric and i also reviewed murder company what can we say about murder company without reviewing it any kind of teaser thing you can say eric about murder company <laughs> okay i think you're thinking i think that's all he's gonna I, say i would say well i would say uh watch the uh um the uh, uh, interview, okay, was Joe yeah. Marini. Okay, dude, cool. that guy go. That guy goes hard with acting. I love listening to him talk. Yes, yeah, so uh, Gil uh, Marini. He actually talks the acting process with Eric Holmes. You will not know that as of this recording because the actual interview with Gil is act is embargoed until the week of its release which is oh yeah that's I, I don't even know what you're talking about oh you no no no. <laughs> no 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 that's good july 5th i don't even so, know who this guy is who, <laughs> what, what were we even talking about no, no i just had embargo the, on the release the embargo I, on the I, release. I will say the interview with him was really good and like i don't know if he teaches acting 
he probably should because like he got me pumped i'm like i want to be an actor and i do not want to be an actor right but and, uh yeah, but uh, murder company needs uh pretty th- this is probably uh, like that's gonna get into the uh, I, I will say there's uh certain people that have uh my sort of thoughts and maybe your sort of thoughts i imagine that will like this more than others is that fair to yeah, say i i think it'll also be fair to say that it's well we can't really review it. I, I don't even know if there's an embargo, but let's just say I'm excited to talk about Murder Company, right? I'm excited yeah. to talk. Yeah, yeah, we can we can definitely say that. Yeah, and then there's another movie called Space Cadet. It's not it's not the story of my life. It's the story of a the fictional story of this woman played then Tiffany Simpson, played by Emma Roberts, who's always dreamed of being an astronaut. That's on Prime Video next week as well. So those are Space Cadet. We have Murder I Company, and know we it was have Mark Singer was in Murder Company. If I'm being <laughs> honest, <laughs> right? That would have been cool. So, and and as well, Kill. So that'll be for episode 249 for next week, and that's it for this week. Bruce Sparky is, I think he's not here. He will be here. We're not gonna wait for him. We'll let Bruce uh, do his do his thing. And final thoughts, Eric Holmes. We love you, Bruce. Please come back. I don't love you, Bruce. Do not come back until next week, of course. Until and get your bike and get your bike short at cinematicspodcast.com. <laughs> cinematicspodcast.com. Thanks again for that plug. Pitchman Eric Holmes. And of course, here's Claire. Hey, bye, everybody. Thank you for joining Cinematic.